Is salvation or eternal life conditional or unconditional? That's the question. And we had a man by the name of Calvin that come up with the one saved, always saved doctrine. Then we had another guy come along, Arminius, called Arminianism. He came up with, uh, well, you know, you can lose your salvation. And, and you know what? For me, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. They're both right and they're both wrong. Uh, because I see both sides. Let's put it this way. As long as I uh, meet God's conditions, I cannot be lost. He's not going to take it back. But a believer could step over the line and be lost again. It should never happen. It isn't God's will for it to happen. But it has happened. But it need not happen to us. Amen. But it could. So that's where we are, and God will be the judge. Acts chapter 1 and verse 16. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled. This is after the Holy Ghost came. Which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. Yeah. He was numbered with us, had obtained part of this ministry. So Judas was in the ministry appointed by the Lord Jesus himself. Now this man purchased his field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, burst asunder in the midst and his bowels gushed out. So Judas went out and committed suicide and hung himself. And it was known unto all that what dwellers at Jerusalem and so much as that field is called in their proper tongue, I'll kill them out, that is to say the field of blood. Now look at this, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and let his bishopric let another take. So Judas was a bishop. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave Judas power to cast out the devil, heal the sick, raise the dead. Huh? In the beginning. But then as we go through the, the account, drop down to verse 25. So Judas killed himself, committed suicide. They appointed another, of course. Uh, and then verse 25 tells us what happened to Judas. That he might, uh, so they elected another man to take Judas's place, okay. That he might take part of this ministry by an apostleship. So Judas was an apostle. Yes. From which Judas, by transgression, fell. So you cannot fall from something you didn't have. So he was in covenant. He was, as far as the Lord was concerned, saved, if we want to use that word. He had ministry. He was given the power and authority. But he fell from his position, his bishopric, that he might go to his own place. So it's very clear that Judas went to hell. I said, Judas went to hell. And he fell from grace, contrary to Mr. Calvin's teaching. But on the other hand, we believers, just because you get entrapped in some sin, doesn't mean you lose your salvation automatically. See? Because he that's out sin can throw the first stone here. All right? Or out these sin, I should say. But the believer does not want to live a lifestyle of sinning and disgrace his Lord and lose out with the Holy Spirit and eventually loses his soul. So we must meet God's conditions to be saved and stay in God's conditions to stay saved. Now religion comes in and makes this difficult. No, it's not difficult. We make it difficult by trying to figure it out. Uh, God's got the whole thing figured out. Just stay in fellowship with Him. Amen. Now, sin will separate a sinner from God. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, if that is right, and it is right, sin, unrepented of, will separate the believer from God. Now, this takes time. Months, years, decades. The Lord's the judge about this. But there is a cutoff point here 
that a person could wind up losing their soul. Amen. That's sad. So faith plus grace. Now faith comes, as I said this morning, when the gospel is heard. But it is conditioned that that person that hears the gospel and receives the mustard seed faith, act on that faith, and that pleases God. That's the only thing that pleases God. There's nothing we can do to please God any more than act in faith. Amen. Faith is the only thing that pleases God. Everything else, well, it might be good, but the Lord's looking for that faith that He gives us. He wants us to use it. Amen. We must accept His offer of salvation. How many have done that tonight? Amen. Well, then God's not going to take it back. He can't. The gifts of calling of God are without repentance. And I hope we, like mom used to say, know what side our bread's buttered on. But also we must reject Satan and turn from sin. Uh, let me take a nap with you here. Let's see. Wake him up. Can you set up, my little buddy? Thank you. That's dishonoring the preacher. I know you're not praying. And I'm not playing. All right. Simply study, we must surrender our will by a choice. You must choose to accept God's offer or reject God's offer before, during, and after the fact of salvation. We must continue to walk in His plan. So if I choose to be saved when the Holy Spirit called me, then I am saved. But if I simply just make a decision without the Holy Spirit drawing me, I am not saved. If the Holy Spirit doesn't draw us to Calvary, we cannot be saved and we cannot stay saved. If we stray from Calvary, we can lose out with God. However, just because I'm a believer does not mean God takes away my freedom of choice. So I had to choose to be saved, and I must choose to remain saved. Now, I'm not saying my will is greater than God's sovereignty, but I am saying He won't violate our freedom of choice. So a wrong choice could lead us down the wrong road, and if we don't repent and turn back, then we could lose out with God. Now, we don't get saved and lost and back and forth every time. But then there comes a time, a point of no return. And I just want to remind us all, there is a point of no return. Judas found out, and I don't want to know anymore what happened. I don't want to wind up like Judas, do you? Well, God will not violate our freedom of choice. So I could choose then, after I'm saved, to walk away from God and eventually lose my soul, in the end, wind up in hell. Now that would really be awful. To know the way of salvation and turn away and lose out with God and wind up in a burning hell. That would be terrible. And yet, I'm concerned it does happen. Now, in Revelation 2, 4, and 5, Revelation chapter 2, and verse 4 to 5. So, by the grace of God tonight, everybody, we're going to maintain our faith in God. And I believe you're sincere about that or you wouldn't be in church tonight. All right? Yeah. We, we've got a part to play in maintenance of our soul. Revelation 2 and verse 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you because you've left your first love. So God didn't take away the first love. The first love didn't turn away from the individual of the church here in Revelation. They turned away from their first love, Jesus, by a choice. Now the next verse. Remember when which thou art fallen and repent. That's all I want to look at tonight. Because you cannot fall for something you did not have. Right. Now, there are those that teach that, you know, uh, Adam couldn't fall from grace. Once grace, always grace. Well, Adam did fall from grace. See? 
Judas fell from grace. Others in the Bible. Saul committed suicide. See, on and on we can go when you begin to look at the scripture. And we need a balance in this subject. We're secure in Christ as long as we remain secure. But we have a part to play in cooperating with the Lord's will. Amen. Rebellion, uh, that's the wrong road. We don't want to get there now, do we? So then, eternal security, conditional or unconditional, that's the question. And we believe that a believer can fall from grace and lose out with God. Or we wouldn't have all these warnings from the Apostle Paul about the subject. Now, I know the Baptists teach that you can't fall from grace. And the Pentecostals live like it. We do not bring a reproach on the name of Christ. You see, the Lord said, I'd rather have you cold or hot. The lukewarm mass is, is, is labeled with the cold. That's where they're all going to wind up. So if we're going to serve God, let's give it 100% effort. What do you say? Amen. So, listen to this statement now that I jotted down here. It is not our salvation, but Jesus' salvation. He makes the choice to save or not save. You just don't get saved whenever you chose to be saved. I had to come when God called or I couldn't get in. The fear that I have is people turn a deaf ear to the call of the Holy Spirit to give their life to Christ and they sin one day too long. Never see them again. I don't know if they can get to the, to the Lord because you cannot come to Christ for salvation until the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin and draws us to the foot of the cross for the blood to be applied. Uh, there is no salvation. It's a serious thing and I dare not water this thing down. Because it's still heaven or hell. In Psalms 3 and verse 8, the reason I said Jesus, it's his salvation, is because it is God's salvation, not ours. He came up with the deal to offer it to us. In Psalms 3 and verse 8, Amen. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Everybody see that tonight? Oh, yeah. Thy blessings is upon thy people. Sheila. In other words, think about that. Salvation belongs to the Lord. So he offers his salvation that he came up with to us. To come into covenant. But you've got to remain in covenant. God will not break it. Men can break the covenant. And it's, it's a scary thing. So what I'm saying tonight... God's promises are conditional. We're always teaching that because they are conditional. And the requirements are to receive from Him and meet His conditions. It's mandatory. If we don't meet God's conditions of faith and grace, then what's left? Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 2. Paul said, right into the church, by which also you are saved, if, uh, that word if can be a big word, if you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now, it's great to be a believer, but to believe in vain, you're going to lose out. You will lose out. Sad to say. And we don't want to lose out with the Lord, now do we? Amen. So we must continue in faith. We must continue in the faith. It's God's faith. He gives us to live by. Amen. And that's the only thing that pleases him, is faith. Matthew 24 now, and verse 12. All right. Verse 12. 
So there is a process that we're going to go through. This applies to the Jews, but it it's also applies to us, secondly. Iniquity shall abound, love of many shall wax cold. Do we see that today in our land? Man, the news is terrible. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So there is an endurance thing that we're going to go through and wind up saved, but there is a test, and it's an endurance test. It's much like running a race of a marathon, see? This is primarily speaking to the Jews, but then I tell you what, we're going to endure some things also. And when we're going through the endurance, there's a tendency to give up and throw in the towel and quit. Well, you can lose out. What are we going to quit to do? Who are we going to quit to serve that's any better than the Lord God Almighty? Amen. There is no choice. Not logically. So then we're going to have our mind made up. And Paul said this in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1 and 2. All right. So the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. Everybody see that tonight? Some. Not everybody. Thank the Lord. Thank God. But some will depart from the faith. Now you cannot depart from something you didn't have. Given heed, here's how it happens. To seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, I saw something about a mega minister by the last name of Dollar. I won't call his first name. But he said everything he taught on tithing was wrong, that the church don't have to tithe today. Well, I got a message for you, Mr. Dollar. Shut everything you have, and let's say your church keeps going without tithes. And offerings. You should have called names. Well, I did. Because this hyper grace thing is getting into the mega ministry, and folks, we better be careful lest we fall from grace. They've already fallen from grace, the very thing they say they have. They don't have it. Go ahead and get upset. I lived there. Because I'm going to answer to God for what I preach behind this pulpit. And I can tell you right now, people are falling from grace from the top to the bottom. And it's going to get worse, but we don't have to participate in it. I refuse. It may get narrow. I'll take the way with God's anointed few. I started out with Jesus, and I'm going through. It's Him plus nothing. You don't tithe you under a curse anyway. Well, that was law. No, that was way before the law. Well, they say it doesn't apply today. Well, let me ask you this. Does honoring your parents apply today? Thou shalt not kill. Does that apply today? Huh? Love God first. Does that apply? Where's the fact checkers? I've, I've had enough. Go like this. Folks, you're going to choose what message you're going to follow. And I tell you what, these guys are wrong. Right. One makes another one. It's nothing personal. It's just people are being deceived by a message that's really not Christ's message. Right. Jesus saw. Jesus said to the Pharisees, except your righteousness exceed, he said to the people, except your righteousness exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, you will in no wise enter in the kingdom of God. They tithe 30%. So don't tell me tithe is not in effect today. Amen. You think a thief's going to get into heaven? You're preaching law. I'm not preaching law. You don't have a problem with it, do you? Just those that want to be tight watch have a problem with it. Well then, I'm taking the chairs out. You can sit on the floor. How do you think I bought those chairs? How do you think we pay for this building? Huh? How do you think we pay for the bills? We don't go out and just pull $100 bills off, t off trees like the Africans think we do. Money tree. God blesses people and they honor Him with the first fruits. Amen? I preach on tithing once a year and I feel it coming on before I go to Africa. 
We need to be reminded now we're in a covenant with God. And that's the only way you're going to overcome coveting. The only way. <laughs> now, I want to pat you on the back, everybody, because I know everybody here, most everybody, honors God with tithes and offerings. And when payday comes, oh, when judgment day comes, I want to hear him say, well done, you good and faithful servants. See? That's what it's all about. And I'm not on that, but, you know, we're in a time that's it's just not pleasant to be in. It's good, but at the same time, it's not. It's bittersweet, it seems. Then in verse 2, they speak lies and hypocrisy. Uh-huh. Their conscience is seared with hot iron. You know what? I will never get up and tell you I was wrong in teaching tithing. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'll have to sell my million dollar airplane. <sighs> I've had it. That's why next month I'm not going to preach because I've, I've been pushed to the limits by a spirit that's not from God. And I'm only going to push so far. I'm not mad at anybody here, but that devil has got to back up. Everybody say, back up, devil. Back up, devil. He's going to run over you if you don't get tough now. Because we're going to endure some things. And one of them is false doctrine coming from the mega ministries. I've had it. We may get small, but God will take care of us. Don't worry about it. It might be a blessing in disguise. Amen. So I cannot depart from something that I have never had a hold of. Hebrews chapter 3, it does get worse. Hebrews chapter 3, only for those that are in disobedience to God, it gets worse. Everybody else can say amen. And look at verse 12. Paul, this is tough. People say to me, well, would you say something that's edifying and uplifting? I am. Depends on how you look at it, where you are. Is it in the Bible? Take heed, brethren. Who is he talking to, everybody? Lest there be an any, any of you an evil heart of unbelief. There's the problem. And departing from the living God. So they'll never tell me a person that knows God cannot depart from God. An evil heart of unbelief departs from their God. Terrible thing. Look at verse 13 then. But exhort one another while it's called day, lest any of you because uh, uh, hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So the only thing then, uh, everybody, that can begin the process of the downwards, downward draft to hell is deceitfulness of sin. That's what calluses the heart and hardens the heart. Yep, that's Believers. Let it go unchecked over a period of time. And Satan picks up on that, takes advantage of that, and comes in for the kill. Now, I've watched people in 30 years. They're on fire for God for a few months. Amen. Oh, as I words our church, I'm telling you right now, scores and scores of people tell me that. Still do today. Where are they at? Well, Satan comes up with a little negative. Something gets stuck in the craw. Sister Sal did something to him. Bad business deal. A million different things. And so they move back away from the pulpit. Then they quit tithing. And the next thing, they're out the door. And not one thing I can do about it. Right. Except warn them. And then they're going to try to find another church. Wait a minute. You drag your trouble in another church, you got to deal with it sooner or later. Right. I don't want somebody else's goats now. That's right. Amen. Right. You can't just turn over a new leaf and not deal with the issues that drove you out of the last church. Right. you got to deal with it. And if the preacher can preach, the Holy Spirit will help you. Right. You just don't put a band-aid over a boil and expect to be right with God. 
I'm concerned that's what's going on. The result of sinning causes a person to lose salvation. That's right. And a hardened heart will take place, and eventually they will turn away from God. Every person that backslides, their heart becomes hardened and callous, and they blame somebody else, and all the time, it's their fault. Jude 1 5, we'll close down tonight with some very uplifting scriptures tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. Now, wait a minute. They knew, but now he's reminded them how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Who destroyed them? God did. Right. How did he do it? Uh, he uses evil spirits, demons, the enemy, Philistines, this and that. You know? Uh, I don't know if the Lord directly kills people, although I, there's a question about Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah. Hypergrace says they went to heaven. I don't think so. See? That's the danger. Anything goes in this doctrine that's coming down the road. It's been here for quite a while. Anything goes. Fact is, you don't even have to repent because here's what they teach. Jesus shed his blood for the whole world, therefore God has reconciled the whole world. They're already all going to heaven, all of them. Wrong. You must be born again. And I won't bend. The Lord can take me on the pulpit if he wants, but I'm not bending. You must be born again. Amen. And say born again. Amen. I mean, if that was true, everybody saved, what do I need to go to Africa for? Quit preaching, quit going to church, see, quit tithing, do what you want, live it up. Everybody's going to heaven anyway. So why why witness? Why read the Bible? Why 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 do anything? Well, you see, they're wrong. Because they get into this election doctrine, which is wrong. That God picks and chooses who's going to be saved, and nothing the lost person can do about it. Wrong. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. They're not preaching the gospel. Is anybody listening to me tonight? I'm upset about it. Folks, you're going to have to toughen up. We're going to take the straight and narrow and the Word of God just like it is. I know I preached rough sometimes. This morning was okay, wasn't it? <laughs> this morning okay? But the night's different. See? I'm a watchman. And I'm the sound of the trumpet right now. You better get in the ark and you better stay there by the grace of God. I don't care if all hell breaks loose. And that's the way it's got to be. Praise God. And that's the way it will be. Holy Spirit will help us. Hebrews 6, verse 4. Brother Monty's favorite scriptures, I know. <laughs> it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift, have been made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Oh, this, oh. Have tasted the good word of God and, and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, Wait a minute. I didn't think you could fall away. That's not what the Bible teaches. You can fall away and be spirit filled. Oh God. Fall away to renew them again to repentance. This is, this is the awful hell of this. Crucify themselves the Son of God afresh and put Him to an open shame. It's bad news. Then in chapter 10 and verse 26... Of that same book. I know you're not shouting, but it's still true. If we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. I want that to soak in. And then in 2 Peter 2 and verse 20, the last scripture tonight. Chapter 2 and 
Can you take this tonight? You'll have to take it. Are you a fall from grace? You reject God's word, and that's step one down. Amen. Just take our medicine. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, they're saved. They are again entangled. They were entangled. They were not entangled. And now they're entangled again. And overcome. So they could get out of it, but they don't for some reason. So the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. It had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to its own vomit again and the sow that was, the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. It's a terrible thing. I wished the falling from grace could never happen. I wished, I hope, I hope I'm wrong. There's too many scriptures that say, no, I'm not wrong. We can be saved as long as we stay in the boat, everybody. But we can stray too far away and eventually lose our soul. Where's the cutoff line? I don't know. I don't know how much God will tolerate with some people. Some people, he goes for years. Others, not long. And wham. I know people could come back. You know, you can send it while you're doing grace. That's right. Uh, but we're entering into this subject here of the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. And uh, these guys teach you can't do that anymore. Well, then why did Jesus warn about it? Right. What is blasphemy in the Holy Spirit? Well, this is the, this is, some of these scriptures leads to that. It's talking against the Spirit. Now, let me say something to all you people that bash tongue talking. There's a real tongue from God. And there's a fake tongue from the devil. Then the human being tries to help God and conjures up something jibby-jabbered means nothing. But that don't mean there's not the real gift. Don't you talk against it. None of you ever talk against the Holy Ghost. Don't you bash tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, fine. That has nothing to do with your salvation. But that's the evidence of being filled with the Holy Ghost and you're straying over there and blabbing your mouth, when you better keep quiet. I've heard, I've heard them say, I can jibber-jabber just like them. Uh-huh. Well, you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a warning tonight. I love to feel the Holy Ghost. And I know the power of God is real. When people mock and make fun and call us a bunch of holy rollers... Well, we'll see someday who's going to go up when the trumpet sounds. I'm going to tell you this as I shut up here before I get stoned tonight. Christ started a church filled with the Holy Ghost. And He's not going to come back for a church any less than what He started. Now take that to the bank. We better get on fire for God, everybody. Amen. From the pulpit right on down now. The Word of God says it. That's the way it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's stand up tonight. Praise the Lord. I know some of you turned the channel. It's okay. The gospel's an offense. Some of these scriptures, man, are, are it's a warning to us. But we can take it, right? right. We can take it because it's true. But thank God we don't have to participate in the downward spiral to hell. No, I refuse. I've got too much to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Oh, man. Heaven center sweeter all the time. Praise God. How many has got some loved ones over in the glory land? It is true, everybody. We're going to be leaving one of these days.
And I'm not going to, by the grace of God, get intertwined in this mess we call a church in America. It's sad when you gotta have strip teasers walk down the aisle. It's sad. On a lighter note, these buckets over here with with uh, gravel in them. Brandon said to put your cigarette butts in there. I thought it was kind of funny. Can't you just see it? Well, let's put it this way. If Jesus were here, would you light up? Hmm? Would you take a snort of whiskey if Jesus was here? Would you allow a strip teaser to walk down this aisle and beguile the little kids? Would you allow that in church? Folks, Christ is going to have a glorious church and we better just realize without holiness, no man shall see the Lord.